Hey guys, welcome back to Enjoying School at Home. My name's Robin and I have five kids ages seven to five months. And today I'm gonna share with you how we got started on audiobooks, what we feel like makes a good audiobook, and a list of some of our favorites. So for us, what makes a good audiobook is if it is age appropriate, and has a good narrator, and then also has additional sound effects. So age appropriate, I want something that's going to engage my kids, and since I have little bitties, a seven-year-old down to a five-month-old, I don't want something that's gonna be too short or um, something that's really more geared towards a picture book. So I like um, books that are gonna be a little bit meatier, but yet still keep my kids engaged. If it goes too far above their heads, then it's not right. So I would shoot for um, slightly above their age level, their reading level, but not so far above that it might be something the parents enjoy and the kids don't so much because they can't keep up with what's going on. Now, the narrator. This is really important because I have gotten stuck listening to a book that the kids in the backseat loved and I couldn't stand the narration. So always, if you can, um, sample the narrator. If you're not familiar with them, make sure that you're okay with the narrator's voice and it's not gonna be something that is really annoying to listen to in the car. Now, some of our favorite books are um, the ones that have great accents by the narrator, sound effects, transition music as it transitions from one chapter to a next and it just helps keep the kids engaged and it also helps them since they're not looking at an actual book in front of them um, when there's things like transition music and accents they can put that that picture together they can keep up a little bit more with who's talking which character is speaking as well as like okay we're, we're changing scenes now we're going to a new chapter and you'll hear that music and it kind of cues your younger kids a little bit and so I find that they can um, stay more engaged because they know more uh, about what's going on and what's happening audiobooks in the car I don't use them all the time and a couple reasons for that. One is I have five kids plus me. There are a lot of moods. Um, if everyone is in kind of a grumpy mood or if I have bickering, then it may not be the best time to try to ask them to calm down, relax, and listen to an audiobook. Also, the same applies for if they're playing and they're engaged in uh, any kind of imaginary game, a lot of times they like to pretend there's an animal in the car or there's an alien in the car or an alien chasing us. If we're playing a game, then obviously I'm not gonna cut off any sort of play with each other to, uh, to turn on an audiobook. Another time that I probably would choose not to use an audiobook is when I'm saving space for talk time. Um, I had some really good advice by an older mom once where she, she told me when I just started listening to audiobooks and we're wanting to do it all the time in the car because we were all enjoying it, she said, well, make sure you save time for, for talk time in the car. And I really, um, I really tried to remember that and keep it at the forefront of my mind. So when my kids are coming home from um, an activity, a sports event, time with friends, or uh, something like the zoo or children's museum, really, if they're coming home from anywhere where they spend time with friends, more towards the end of the day, I want to make sure that there is a space for them to talk to me, tell me about their day, um, if they have any questions, anything rolling on their minds. I hate um, to think that I would be filling every space in their days or even their thought lives that they wouldn't have a chance to just talk to just talk openly with me in an open space conversation. So I also am aware of that too. I do like to use audiobooks in the mornings. So if we are on our way to our um, classical education school, which my children attend two days a week, or if we're going out to run errands and they're not really gonna be getting out of the car much, like um, for example, dropping off dry cleaning or the mail or getting takeout for lunch, these are prime times for me to turn on an audiobook, let everyone just relax, enjoy the morning, and get into a good story. Okay, so quick recap, when to use and when not to use audiobooks in the car, um, talking or bickering, or in a mood, if they're playing, and if I want to save space for talk time. That's when I don't use my audiobooks in the car. Um, I do use them when I we know we're gonna be running errands or an early morning drive to head off to our two day a week school. Now on to all of my lists. Um, I put together some lists of our favorites, the ones that we've done, and I'll kind of list them off here by age and I'll show pictures of the, the book, the book cover and title. Um, 
for toddlers, for my little guys, we have loved, and preschoolers, we have loved Frog and Toad collection, the Miss Piggle Wiggle collection, and the Raggedy Ann series. For my kindergartner and first grader, um, we have, they're not gonna be in second and first, so when school starts, I'll have to adjust that. But we, um, we've enjoyed some, some larger books, more chapter books, and those are books like Stuart Little and Mary Poppins, Grimm's Fairy Tales by the Grimm's Brothers, Charlotte's Web, and The Snow Queen. A um, couple recommendations in these. I would definitely listen to The Snow Queen in the winter time. Um, kind of a given there, but we loved the ending and the moral representations in The Snow Queen. And Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins was a favorite of mine personally as well. Um, they had a, the narrator had a beautiful British accent and I seem to enjoy any audiobook that's told in a British accent. It's very um, calming and relaxing and fun to listen to for a mom in the car as well. So um, I had never read the book Mary Poppins. I'd seen the movie of course and it, even the book had some surprises in it for me that I didn't know were part of the original story. Okay this next list is series. So book series that we've actually done on audiobook. One of the positives about using a series if you have younger listeners is that they're going to repeat the same characters or the same trends. So I'll, for example, the Magic Treehouse series has Jack and Annie, a brother and sister, and basically the same story structure is within each book. So there's a Magic Treehouse, they travel in time, and they have an adventure, and they travel back to their, their home. So it makes it easier for the kids to keep up with when there's that rep repetitive story structure built into any sort of series. So here's our list of series. Magic Treehouse, The Timeless Tales of Beatrix Potter, Hank the Cowdog Adventures. Um, I have a star here in my notes for Hank the Cowdog Adventures because my husband and I loved these books. I didn't grow up reading them. My husband grew up reading them and I have loved listening to them on audiobooks. They have a great narration um, with this title that I'm showing you right here and um, great sound effects. They just did a phenomenal job uh, really bringing the life of the book to audio. Another one is How to Train Your Dragon. Um, this is the one that the movie series was made off of, but there are definitely some changes in the books. Um, my son had already seen the movies, but he still enjoyed the books a whole lot as well. We've also done all 30 plus hours of Ramona Quimby and 30 plus hours of Henry Huggins. Now these are, these are books that we did um, over the course of a couple, two years, I would say, and because we have to take turns. So not all of my kids love the same books at the same time. That means that we're gonna be taking turns and, and they can actually handle it. Um, if you're worried about like, well, I, I feel like we should finish this book before we start another one, like I would not worry about that at all. Just like they could, um, you or I could sit down and watch different TV shows and still keep up with what's going on. The kids can do that with the books as well. Their brains actually can handle um, probably way more than we get them, give them credit for. So I would definitely, if you need to take turns with the audience in your car, then don't be afraid to take turns on the audience in your car. And we usually switch it based on the day. Now when I say that not everybody loves every book, um, it also is true for uh, some books just don't work out. So. If, if you can tell that a book is a stretch for you or your kids and it's just not really um, snagging their engagement like you want it to, it's okay to walk away as well. I don't really recommend it because I'm a type A personality and I have a really hard time not finishing something. But um, we did manage to finish them but we took small bites and two books that we had a, a little bit more of a stretch to do was The Magician's Nephew and that might have been... Um, Overexcitement on my part to was really excited to introduce the Chronicles of Narnia to them. We started with Magician's Nephew and I think it was just a little too hard for my even my older two to really um, follow the storyline yet. So I'm gonna give it two more years. Maybe when they are entering fourth and third, we can revisit the Chronicles of Narnia and they might really enjoy it then. Um, another one that 
my son liked, but my daughter had a little bit harder time following, and even though she's older, I just don't think it grabbed her engagement as well, was The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald, and uh, it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it, but I, in retrospect, I probably could have waited a year or two on that book as well. Okay, so right now, we are currently flipping between Anne of Green Gables and the Blue Fairy book. And then one other one that I'll throw in at lunchtime sometimes or snack time is um, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. The car is not the only place we use audiobooks. I just mentioned sometimes at lunch I'll throw in uh, the Sideways Stories from Wayside School. And if we need to be a little extra quiet for dad, let's say dad's on a meeting and he works from home, um, it's a great time to turn on one of those audiobooks. Um, we also love to do them during arts and crafts time. Uh, so that would be painting, Play-Doh, um, and I will play music in the back. I try to stick with audiobooks and actually they will end up painting longer and doing Play-Doh longer, whatever they're working at. Whereas I would, maybe would get 30 minutes out of them, I can get almost an hour when they're just relaxing and listening to the audiobook. At the end of our audiobooks, we do like to watch the movie if there is a movie that goes with them. So, um, for example, Mary Poppins, How to Train Your Dragon. But we have had a little bit of a movie party. We make a big deal of it to celebrate that we like we finished one of our books and the kids really have a good time with that too. Some books that are on deck that I am looking forward to starting, so maybe this fall, would be A Stage Full of Shakespeare, um, 12 stories retold for children, and then The Wind in the Willows and Boxcar Children series. Before I close up here, guys, I wanna share with you a quote by Charlotte Mason. It says, so much for the right books. The right use of them is another matter. The children must enjoy the book. The ideas it holds must each make that sudden delightful impact upon their minds, must cause that intellectual stir which marked the inception of an idea. Overall, my goal is to provide an abundant educational feast for my children. And one of the ways I do that is by using audiobooks to expose them to even more stories and literature to help them fall in love with reading and fall in love with learning. Um, this is how I kind of add into that mix while I am juggling motherhood and education and just in general trying to raise uh, five tiny humans. So I hope that somewhere in here you found an inspiration to start an audiobook with your kid. And if you would like more videos, please subscribe for Enjoying School at Home. Thanks for watching and have a great day.